Hoop Sisters and in this freshly picked video we're going to show you how to make block 12. Here is block 12B. In the video we're going to actually stitch out 12A which is kind of a mirror image and the fabrics are reversed. You'll see when we stitch it. So 12A in the quilt is located right here. So this is our 7 inch quilt and this is the 5 inch sample. So let's go see what we need to make it. Alright, the supplies you will need to do your block 12, and we're going to do block 12A, is you're going to need your fabric 2. There's two different sizes of your fabric 1. You're going to need the, the applique fabric, and we're going to use red. And then you're also going to need a fabric 3, which we've also used the same black for our fabric 3. You're going to need your backing fabric. You are going to need your um, optional wool. So if you're going to add wool for a little extra dimension, you're going to have to have that cut to size and prepared on the edges. And of course, you're going to have your battleizer all hooped up in the smallest hoop possible. You're also going to need thread that contrasts with your the black fabric, a thread that contrasts with your applique fabric. Um, I'll show you the block here. And then you're also going to need thread that matches your fabric one and thread that matches your fabric two. And if you're putting the back fa backing fabric on the back while it's in the hoop, you will have to have matching bobbins. But if you choose to put your backing on after you have sections assembled, then you don't need to have a matching bobbin. So let's go to the machine and we'll get started. So the first step, like all the other steps, is we have water soluble thread in the needle and embroidery bobbin thread in the bobbin. In the machine, we'll sew a placement stitch. Step two is an option where you can add that layer of um, wool for a little more dimension into your quilt if you choose to. If you don't want that, then you can skip over this step and go right to step three. But I will show you how to do step two. You're just going to place your prepared wool right over the top of that placement stitch and the machine will sew a zigzag to hold it in place. Step three is still with the water soluble thread and the machine will sew the pattern right onto your block so you know where to place your fabric. And all you need to do is just push the wool down in front of where the machine is stitching to help avoid the foot getting caught in the wool. For step four, you're going to take the fabric that um, your instructions call for. I'm doing block 12A, so it calls for fabric two. If you're doing block 12B, it's going to call for fabric one. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that fabric and you are going to place it right over that triangle area that the machine stitched out when it sewed out the pattern. And you're going to make sure it's centered nicely over that. Make sure you have enough fabric on the top so that it is covered. And we still are going to continue with our water soluble thread and we're going to sew a tack down to hold that fabric in place. So while it's stitching, you just have to make sure that your fabric stays nice and smooth and that no puckers happen. Now I'm going to trim the fabric to a scant quarter inch seam. Now we're on step five and you're going to take your fabric to triangle and you're going to place it right side down. Uh, make the raw edges even with where you cut the triangle and make sure that there is an equal amount of fabric both at the top and also at this end of 
up just outside the block. Make sure that that amount of fabric is even. I've changed my thread. We don't want to do seam and water soluble, so I changed my thread to just a neutral thread. I just picked the black thread and the machine will sew a seam for us. just going to flip that fabric so it's right side up and I'm going to give it a nice finger press and we can move on to step six which is another seam so this will be your small black triangle or small triangle might be yours might not be black but for me it is and I'm going to place that right sides down and Put the raw edges even again leaving the equal amount of fabric on both the top and the bottom outside the block and we're going to sew a seam and we're going to flip the fabric right side up and give it a nice finger press So for step seven, I have put water soluble thread in the needle because we're gonna be doing a tack down stitch to hold these, this fabric in place so we can complete our block. So just finger press both those seams, make sure the fabric's laying smooth, and then we can do our tack down stitch. Just make sure your fabric stays smooth while it's doing this. And any fabric that you have that is extending um, down here into the bottom part of your block, just trim it to a scant quarter inch. Step eight is also with water soluble thread in the needle. And on this step, it's going to stitch out the placement stitch for the applique. you're going to need your applique fabric and you're going to place that right side down or right side up not right side down and you're going to just center it over the placement stitch that just stitched and with water soluble thread it will tack this fabric down just make sure the fabric stays nice and smooth our hoop scissors mini we're going to go ahead and trim real close to the stitching here and on this bottom edge we're going to trim that a scant quarter inch Step 10, you're, I'm going to take my next piece of fabric, and this is the, I think it's fabric three. Yes, it's listed as fabric three. I'm actually using the same fabric as I did um, for our fabric one, just because I wanted that black circle. So don't be afraid to experiment with doing that. So you're going to take the large rectangle of your fabric three, and you are going to center it in the bottom. At the bottom, you're going to make sure that you have, oh, a generous quarter inch to a half an inch left on the outside of the block and make sure it's even all the way around. And then we're going to continue with that water soluble thread and we're going to sew the tack down for this fabric. Now 
I'm going to trim real close to the stitching because this is going to be have a satin cover stitch. So it's like we've appliqued this bottom piece. So I'm going to use my hoop scissors mini to trim real close to the stitching. Step 11, I put my thread that matches my applique fabric in the needle only, and I'm just going to sew a satin stitch. Stop and clip a thread and let it finish the satin stitches. Step 12, you're going to put thread in the needle only that matches your fabric three and you're going to sew that satin stitch. Step 13 is that step that where you add the optional, the backing, while it's in the hoop. And again, this is something that if you choose to do it while it's in the hoop, you can. If you are going to sew all the blocks together without the backing being on it and then add backing by section, then you would skip this step. But if you're doing this step, you're going to just center your backing fabric over the stitching that you can see where the block is and this gently smooth it out smooth it out don't push down too hard because we don't want anything to get stretched out or um, something to pop out of the hoop so again if the rough side of the battleizer is on the back then it kind of tends to stick a little bit better if not a little sulky kk2000 so it looks like it's sticking it's still there Okay, so continuing with step 13, I have the hoop back on the machine. I have water soluble thread in the needle. The backing fabric is on the back. So we'll just hit the start button and it sews that stitch to tack it all together. it's going to do the quilting right on top of the white fabric. So you're going to match your needle thread with the fabric that you have in that spot. And remember, if you do have your backing fabric on, that you're going to want to make sure you turn your automatic thread cutter off. And you're also going to do a needle down, needle up, so that you can bring that bobbin thread to the top. And that will help keep the back look a lot neater with no bird's nest. Step 15, you are going to match your thread with um, the fabric that you have here with your fabric. Well, depends on what block you're doing. In this case, for the 12A, it's fabric one. So I'm matching my thread with my fabric one. If you're doing 12B, you're going to match your, your thread to fabric two. So it's whatever on the outside edges here, that's what you're going to match. So I'm going to do a needle down, needle up to help avoid those bird's nests. step 16 and on this step you're going to place thread in the needle and in the bobbin if you have the backing fabric on that's going to contrast with your applique fabric so i'm going to bring my bobbin thread to the top so it looks nice on the back 
And it's gonna do some more decorative stitching. Step 17, you're gonna put thread in the machine that matches your fabric three here on the bottom. And since I have my backing added, I'm gonna bring that bobbin thread to the top again so it looks pretty. And it's gonna sew some quilting. Step 18, you're gonna put put thread in your machine that contrasts with your fabric three and it's going to do some more quilting so again I'm bringing the bobbin thread to the top so the back looks pretty and we'll let it do some more quilting. Okay the final step in our block 12a and our block 12b is to add um, the little vine slash ribbon that stitches through it. You can see it's in this step right here. We're gonna skip that just because of how we've decided to do this um, particular little quilt. Um, and I'll show you why when we're finished this. We did show it in a previous video, but since we're not making the entire quilt, it didn't just seem, we just thought we'd leave that out. So our, um, just going to call our block 12a officially finished and I checked where the placement is because we're not making the full quilt and just to make sure which edge is going to have binding sewn to it if any and it does happen to be this very top edge and personally I like to take care of that first that way I won't get carried away when it comes time to me um, trimming with the, the metal side and I don't want to end up trimming too much off of it. So always try and get that out of the way first. So all the other three sides, they will have a block joined to it. So I will trim those sides using the trimmer by George. So again, you're just going to tuck that metal edge of the trimmer between the fabric on the front and the battleizer. You can give it a gentle tug to get nice and close, but make sure there's no fabric peeking out. And then you'll need a 60 millimeter rotary cutter to trim that because it is raised a little. So then that will take care of any bulk that would happen in the seam allowance if you didn't do that. Turn this around and get this side. And again, you're just putting the metal edge between the battleizer and the fabric that's on the front. And then we're using a 60 millimeter rotary cutter to cut that off. One more side. And this side has a block, another block that will be sewn to it. So we're gonna trim that using the metal edge of the trimmer by George. Then what's left is some extra fabric from the front and that is going to be trimmed a quarter of an inch from the quarter of an inch from the basting stitch. So I can see it a little better on the back side. So I think I'm going to trim with this side up. This one just has a little shaved off of it. That's our top where the binding is. So I'll trim this side. And one more side to go. All right, so there is our completed 12A block. And there's the back, and there's our completed 12B block. And again, I have written 12B on here just so I know where it goes in the quilt. And I will do the same here. I'll write 12B on there. So I'll, then I'll come back and I will show you what our smaller sample looks like, at least half of it. So we 
here it is. Here is this little sample I'm doing. I'm just, I'm not doing the outside blocks that has the flower appliques. I want it to be a smaller sample so I can show you what you can do with this. So as you can see, that's why I don't have the vines um, or what do you want to call them? Vines or ribbon flowing through it that I've skipped that step. But there you can see this is a 12A and this is 12B and you just make two halves, sew them together and you have a hole. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's helped you and we appreciate you. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.